Never is a surprise. Anyway, let's move it on, shall we? Yep, let's move it on. Um, as you would probably imagine, we have to travel a lot to make this show. I mean, just in making this series alone, we have been to Colombia, Detroit, Las Vegas, Scotland, Tbilisi, Baku, Istanbul, Helsinki and Chongqing. Mongolia, Hong Kong, Florida, Spain, France, Italy, Switzerland. That's just to make 13 programmes. Yeah, and we're not making that up. We genuinely have been that far. Yes. And that means we have to go through a lot of airports, and almost all of them. Drivers mad for a number of small reasons, and one big one. Yeah, you. What? Well, you. We have to travel with you everywhere and you never stop ranting about it. Well, I do a little bit of that, yeah. A little bit? Yeah. The first 20 minutes of the film we're about to see are just rants before we even get to the point. Yeah, that is true, but it's worth it, as you shall see. This is London Stansted Airport, which is located nowhere near London. There we are, weather spoons with runways and miles of tape to make your life worse. And why do they need a two-hour check-in? I mean, two hours to get my suitcase from the check-in desk to just behind that wall over there, which is where the plane is. To go on, two hours? I could almost get it back to London in two hours. Oh, good. Security. Time to take all my clothes off and give someone my toothpaste. And do you know the worst thing is? I mean, the idiocy of people in these queues, just beggars belief. Look at her shoes. You see that? Look at her. She looks like Elton John in Tommy. It's going to take her three hours to take each one of those off. And take your laptops out now while you're in the queue, not when you get there. I came here on a train, 2,000 people on it. No security at all. Going on an aeroplane, ooh, well, we'll do this. And then, of course, is your bag going to be selected for a special search? Of course it is. All this, there you go. You've been through an x-ray machine. If you go to a hospital and you x-ray somebody's leg, OK, you say, right, it's not broken, I can see that, but let's just cut your flesh open to make sure. It's, it's, no, it's been x-rayed. Why are they looking at it again? Oh, here we go. Yep, salt, self-raising flour, normal flour, baking powder, talcum powder. That's from an athlete's foot. I put them in clear bags every single airport you go through anywhere in the world. Why are they so interested in my condiments and medical necessities? I don't I mean... know, mate. And then you're out of security and straight into a shop, which wouldn't be so bad if it sold something you actually wanted, like bog roll or cat food. But no, all they sell is perfume. Why do they think when you get to an airport, all oh, right, I've suddenly overcome with a need, to smell like Victoria Beckham. Then you've got the adverts. Look at that halfwit. Look at him. Every advert in every airport makes no sense. And then you have these moronic slogans from companies that do things you don't understand. Go, Manage your infrastructure like a visionary, not a functionary. What's that mean? Might as well say, manage your infrastructure like a visionary, not a shoplifter. There's a shop at Heathrow that sells a life-size pot horse. I mean, who, when they're about to get on an aeroplane, goes, yes, that's exactly what I need, a brittle, fragile pot horse to lumber about. I'm going to start an airline called... I'll take my chances there. You turn up, get on the plane, it takes off. Nobody on board smells like Victoria Beckham. No security, nothing. If it blows up, it blows up. Not that you can say blows up in an airport these days, cos then you have to go to prison for 400 years. Why is she wearing a tracksuit? Well, so she can be comfortable. She's not going on a fighter jet. She's going to Spain. There's no G. Well, there's one. Well, I mean, there's one G now. I'm not thinking, oh, these jeans are really uncomfortable. I wish I'd worn a caftan. And all those, they're the amuse boosh of the problems you have at an airport. Now it's time for the really big one, the distance to the gate. This never ends. Of course it doesn't oh, end. Look at that, look at that. Ten-minute walk to gates. There's no such thing as a ten-minute walk. Nobody walks for ten minutes. Well, I mean, I eat wood or a wildebeest, but not a human being. Ten-minute walk. The distance from the backdrop here to this gate we're going to is 1.2 kilometres. In Atlanta, the walk to the furthest gate is two kilometres. In Beijing, it's two miles. The astonishing miracle is that, so far, I haven't actually been run over by one of those carts going beep, 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 warning, fat bastard on board. 
and then you get to a corner, and is it the end? No, there's another mile of corridor to get down. No one in the history of aviation has ever flown from gate one. There are no gate ones anywhere in the world. Here's your ticket, gate 374. Where's gate one? I can see now why James May volunteered not to be in this film. And finally, you get to the gate, which is so far from civilization, they're still using a dot matrix printer. We have explained to him that the walk has to be this long because aeroplanes are wide because they've got wings, but he can't seem to understand the concept. Look, you